Hey everyone, welcome back to another Hardware News Recap for the week. We are talking about a few things that are pretty interesting this week, including some AMD Ryzen leaks for upcoming processors. Intel potentially looking at another 14 nanometer shortage. We got the foil polygon shirts in and are shipping them to all of you who ordered those. Uh, China entering the DRAM market and more. Before that, this video is brought to you by EVGA's Combo Deal. Right now, EVGA is offering a free CLC240 liquid cooler with the purchase of an X299 Dark motherboard from its web store. The X299 Dark has been our preferred Intel HEDT overclocking motherboard, and the CLC240 is a performance-oriented closed-loop liquid cooling solution. Both recipients have overall positive reviews from us previously. Use code GAMERSNEXUS at checkout to get a free CLC240 with the EVGA X299 Dark motherboard at the link below. So first up, those GN foil polygon shirts are in. You've been waiting for those. A lot of you ordered those. And we did receive them uh, two days ago before filming this. We just finished QC, and now we're preparing to ship them out to you. So if you ordered one, you'll get a shipping notice shortly. Thank you for your patience on that, and everything's looking really good. We're pretty happy with them. Uh, no QC issues. So. Uh, Final restocking of the chalkboard shirt. There's a black version of the blueprint design that we have that's called chalkboard. And we ran it for over a year, but we do need to make space for new designs. A couple of you did ask for us to restock chalkboard, and I said I would. So instead of just retiring it uh, when we were out of stock, I did decide to do one final run for those who wanted to grab it. It's on store.gamersnexus.net if you want to pick it up. We are not doing any additional print runs for it. It's been around for over a year and uh, we do need to, to clear shelf space. So you can pick that up on the store. That'll be the, fat, the, the last restocking. There's, I think I did just like maybe 40 or 60 of them, something like that. And then uh, blueprint shirts were restocked and those aren't being retired. So those are on the store as well. All right, first real news item. Uh, I guess I should address this. We're gonna have a, a review on this. It should hopefully be on the channel already. And if not, it will be tomorrow when this video goes up. And this is the, uh, the English name is Yeston. It's an RX 580. It doesn't sound exciting, except look at the box, though. That's how you know it's actually pretty exciting. Genuinely, I like this card a lot for, for the, uh, the fact that it shows you can do more than black and red gamer for an aesthetic for a video card. Because it's bit, you look around the market, and it's, you've got black and red gamery look, or maybe, if you're lucky, a bit more professional look, but the, the heat sink's no, not really that good. So, uh, yeah, check for the review on that. Anyway, GN receives AMD Ryzen leaks. These are pretty exciting for you if you have been following our uh, coverage of some of the AMD processors that are coming out, like the Threadripper stuff. We received this from a source that we believe to be credible. This is uh, news on the upcoming 17H70H-7FH family, which is the within the Ryzen 3000 family of processors and it follows the Ryzen 3000 launch, we've received multiple very dense PDFs from AMD's uh, official documentation for its partners, things like VRM design, heatsink design, thermal power requirements, uh, processor specifications, a lot of, I haven't gone through all of it yet, but there's a lot. And we're gonna start with just some of it here. So uh, some of the specifications for the CPUs do include Notably, a, uh, an alleged 65 watt part. And again, this we'll see if all of these come true. They probably should. The documents are legitimate as far as we can tell. But let's still classify it as a rumor for now. Uh, and once we see how, how things turn out in the next couple months or so, we can, uh, we can determine the exact accuracy of this information. So. Uh, for, for the sake of fun, one of those was, two of those were 65 watt parts in the table, and we'll put that on the screen. We have modified the table to protect the source. So we've shuffled some things around, we've removed some things. And this is a list, uh, a set of two 12 core parts, but at a 65 watt TDP. TDP is not the same as power consumption. In fact, they're very different. TDP is mostly an imaginary made up number. We'll talk more about that later. Doesn't really relate to anything about power since power is not in the AMD TDP formula. But anyway, 65 watt TDP parts, and that is significantly lower than uh, the existing Ryzen 9 3900X and puts it closer to a 3600 for TDP. The parts are named 100070, uh, 100072. They don't have official product names for the public in these tables just yet. And they are listed with a maximum boost clock, or at least a maximum clock, of uh, 4350 megahertz 
for each. The all core frequency will be lower, but that's the boost frequency listed. Power consumption is listed as 88 watts during the highest power state, keeping in mind that TDP, again, uh, isn't exactly power, and this is why. The P1 state will allegedly draw 53 watts, according to the document, at 2800 megahertz. Intel could be looking at another 14 nanometer shortage. There was an ongoing drawn out shortage for them, uh, which happened right around when AMD was pushing for Ryzen 3000 to come out, and actually during the Ryzen 2000 launch as well, and has given AMD a, a stack of cards that really benefit them at the table. And that looks like it might be continuing or restarting by a report, uh, a recent report from Digitimes. And this says that uh, it appears that Intel is staring down the barrel of yet another 14 nanometer CPU shortage. Digitimes sources indicate that Intel's production has fallen back once again, with OEMs and notebook vendors allegedly having to delay product launches until 2020. The culprit, it seems, is the new Comet Lake and Cascade Lake set of CPUs. Ian Cutchess with Anantech reached out to Intel to see if the chip maker would comment on the story from Digitimes. Intel replied and said, we, uh, quote, we continue working to improve the supply and demand balance for our PC customers. In the first half of 2019, we saw PC customer demand that exceeded our expectations and surpassed third-party forecasts. We have added 14 nanometer output capacity and are ramping volume on 10 nanometer with systems on shelf for holiday. While our output capacity is increasing, we remain in a challenging supply demand environment in our PC centric business. We are actively working to address this challenge and we continue to prioritize available output toward the newest generation Intel Core i5, i7 and i9 products that support our customers high growth segments. And this is all a statement from Intel to Ian Cotris of Anatech and he does great work. If you haven't seen it, he recently did a uh, boost story on Ryzen. You should read that. So the statement at least partially corroborates Digitime's story. Intel's supply and demand situation with 14 nanometer has been troubled since at least 2018, and it's been volatile uh, in the time since. It, it has eased a bit in recent months. Demand and desktop has eased a bit in recent months for Intel as well, but the supply issue has, hasn't been quite as bad. However, it looks like Q4 could see Intel CPU supply constricted once again. Uh, so keep that in mind, especially with new processors probably coming out. China, entering the DRAM market. There are currently three notable memory suppliers in the market. All of your memory, all of your RAM from Corsair, G-Skill, Dial. I don't know, that was one of the options in my list apparently. Uh, all of those memory makers buy from basically Samsung, Hynix, and Micron. Those are the three big players. There used to be a lot more, just like any other industry that has boomed and, and well, this one's still booming, but boomed and had the smaller companies bust. This one has shrunken quite a bit. So Alpida, for example, no longer really around. Nanya doesn't really count. They make some DRAM cache, but it's not like they're a major memory manufacturer by any stretch of the word. So it's Samsung, Micron, and Hynix, SK Hynix. Two of those companies are based in South Korea. One is based in Idaho, of all places, actually. Uh, Micron is headquartered in Idaho in the US. And the uh, last year has seen the Chinese government investigating these three memory suppliers for price fixing. This was a concern in the community as well because the memory prices were actually absurd. If you weren't shopping around then, uh, you're very fortunate. And uh, so there was a price fixing investigation, but that had questions attached to it as well because it was at the same time as the uh, as state backed firms in China were trying to enter the semiconductor market for memory supply. So that's finally progressed. The story is developing now. Uh, state backed semiconductor manufacturer Changxin Memory Technology, based in Hefei and that's uh, west of Nanjing, run by CEO Zhu Yimin, has begun making memory on its own node that it has dubbed a 10 nanometer class node. That is their phrasing. It ends up with a chip larger than competitors within the same class at about 18 nanometers as opposed to the uh, competing chip sizes of 12 to 16 nanometers from the three big companies that are out. And it's not the smallest, but it's expected to be fabbed at a, a preliminary startup a production run of 120,000 wafers monthly. So we'll follow that story. It's Going to be interesting. It'll be interesting to have another memory player in the market if they can make it. Uh, we'll see how the technology is. There's been memory suppliers in particular have had a, 
a long storied history of intellectual property theft. So we'll see if that continues. Corsair, I probably will. Corsair IQ has been updated. Last week, we reported on a recent version of Corsair IQ causing some gameplay issues, among other problems, like general bloatware does. And this was a, a pretty well-reported issue on the Corsair forums. Corsair took note of this, and after we published that video and article, it came to our attention that Corsair has actually dumped a new version of IQ. So if you've had issues with frame rate with IQ installed and you still want all of your RGB control, you can go try version 3.20.80 by Corsair, uploaded already on their site if you'd like to pick it up. Uh, many users on the Corsair forums were reporting just from glancing through it that 3.20 is in fact better and has resolved previous issues. So if you've been affected, get, uh, be sure to get the latest version of it. We'll link it in our show notes document in the description below if you want a quick link to that. AMD could claim 10% of the server market by the end of 2020, which would be a big deal for AMD. That's the, the biggest place AMD has lost over the years has been server to Intel, which at time, well, currently even, uh, has held over 90% of the market, but even more of that up until Epic came out. So this is a big deal. Digitimes, again, citing market observers, reports that AMD could claw away as much as a total of 10% of the server market from Intel. And this is by the end of next year. According to the piece by Digitimes, AMD has won contracts from IBM. It's also received contracts from Dell and Nokia for second-gen Epic processors, which has been really popular. And as it stands currently, AMD represents roughly 5% of the server market. So that'll be a doubling of what they currently have. Priced from $500 to about $7,000, AMD's Epic lineup offers significant value while also delivering competitive performance. But the biggest thing here is that Intel Xeon counterparts have been plagued with mitigation issues that, although they don't really affect gaming that much, do affect the server environment. This hasn't gone unnoticed among server customers, uh, and Dell recently announced five new server designs built from the ground up using AMD Epic chips. Epic has also secured a number of world records, including one in our last news video last week, for real-time 8K HEVC encoding. Just under two years ago, for perspective on all of this, if you hear 5% and you think that's nothing, well, you're certainly right in that it's not a lot compared to 95%. But just under two years ago, Intel held about 99% of the server market. So five is quite a game for AMD from where it was. The inroads AMD has made with Epic in this regard really can't be overstated. They still have a really long way to go. Intel is domineering in its position, even with being challenged in desktop, where it's lost a lot of sales to enthusiast customers like people who buy through our affiliate links. We can see which processors are more popular and Big surprise, AMD's big right now. So uh, server's a stronghold that AMD needs to get back, and it looks like they're working on that. Intel Memory and Storage Day, the roadmap for Optane DIMMs, SSDs, and NAND. Intel held its Memory and Storage Day in Seoul, South Korea, where Intel doubled down on its intent to fill the performance gap between storage speed and memory capacity, aiming to bring data closer to the processor. The focal point of Intel's press event was Optane. And uh, Optane will see a slew of new products using the technology. Optane, first of all, when it first came out, came out in sort of an odd capacity. It was a small M.2, basically cache drive that sat in front of hard drives, and it was intended for the garbage computer box you might buy from Best Buy or something, or not you, but perhaps uh, people who don't watch us would buy from Best Buy. So not really a strong start, but Optane is actually promising in several ways, it just that wasn't particularly a good demonstration of it. So Optane's more than the cache drive that it was when it launched, and Intel's facilities in Rio Rancho, New Mexico, have Optane development uh, being announced, especially recently at the South Korea event. Intel announced a second generation of Optane DC persistent memory, and that is codenamed Barlow Pass. It's actually not a leak for once. Uh, scheduled for release in 2020 to coincide with the release of Intel's next generation Xeon scalable processors, according to reports online. Intel also announced a successor to its 660p SSD. That would be the 665p Intel SSD that uses Intel's new 96-layer QLC NAND. The Intel announcement didn't disclose pricing or availability of this product as of yet, 
but we could probably expect to see it in laptop designs by early next year. Intel also demonstrated its 144 layer uh, NAND QLC as well using five bits per cell. That's slated for commercial availability in 2020 sometime. All right, rumor alert, whole bunch of rumors. We are trying to really heavily mark them as rumors just so everyone's clear. The earlier one we did on the AMD Ryzen leaks, we're, we're pretty confident that's going to be true. There may be some modifications, who knows, but that's looking legitimate. It came directly from AMD documents. They're dense, they're, there's a lot of them. But these are things that we've dug up online. So uh, Intel's i9-9900KS allegedly surfaced with an alleged price tag of about $600. While Intel hasn't officially disclosed the price of its forthcoming super bin i9-9900KS, we expect it to be steeper than the one that's out there now, the 9900K. Listings at both Australian and US retailers, which weren't supposed to be listings just yet, and are likely placeholders for now, somewhat confirm suspicions of high prices. It's not uncommon for retailers to do placeholder pricing though. So we'll see. But also $600 isn't unreasonable compared to what the 9900K launched at, uh, based on Intel's pricing anyway. So a listing at mwave.com currently has the 9900KS at $900 AUD, which converts roughly to $670 US. Twitter user momomo underscore US found a US listing with a $604 price tag on a retailer. And while we won't have an official price until next month when the 9900KS actually ships, both listings seem to suggest that the CPU won't be available for less than $600, a $100 premium on top of the 9900K. And then we'll come back with testing once we actually have that processor too. More rumors in the last news item, AMD's 550 chipset, RX 5300 XT, rumors, and the GTX 1660 Super debut. So this past week was really, truly rife with rumors. Obviously, we, we packed in some real news in here too, like the China story and uh, the GN foil shirts. That's a real news item. But we do have to cover these. So and these B550 chips that we have heard about since CES of this year. And when we first heard about it, we heard a very tentative expectation from board partners of, well, actually, we originally heard end of this year for launch of B550. And then when we met with them at Computex, the same board partners were saying, actually, never mind, it's been pushed back, we expect first half 20, uh, 2020. So anyway, B550 has surfaced thanks to HP this time with listings showing up via German retailer Alternate, or Alternate, I'm not sure how they prefer to say their name. But uh, the listings show two systems, the Pavilion Desktop TP01, and that's a 0006NG model, and desktop M01-F0017NG. Both systems list the AMD Promontory B550A chipset, which is set to be produced by Asmedia this time, unlike the X570 chipset. And the most prominent feature for B550, or the lack thereof anyway, is uh, PCIe 4. It's not there, unlike X570. Additionally, the listings show the AMD RX 5300 XT, and again, that's rumor status. The only listed specs are four gigabytes of GDDR5 memory for that one, no additional specs listed. The aforementioned systems could debut as soon as October, according to the listings, if they are accurate. And then separately, HKEPC, a Hong Kong-based media outlet, seemingly outed more specifics for the 550 chipset in a review of ASRock's X570 Creator motherboard. The 550 chipset supposedly supports two USB 3.2 Gen 2, 10 gigabit per second ports, 8 SATA 3 ports, and an unspecified amount of a USB 3.1 Gen 1. Relatively unsurprising for that, but the 550 looks to support or provide four PCIe 3.0 lanes to the processor, which is consistent with the past chipsets. And uh, interestingly, the 550 chipset supposedly supplies four PCIe 3 lanes and eight PCIe 2 lanes for general purpose use. And those can be reallocated as other things. So finally, we recently discussed the possibility of a 1660 Super in last week's news video. The alleged card is back in the news, this time with a rumored October launch date. Uh, video cards, citing sources at ASUS, claims that the company is preparing three models for a launch next month. So that's it for news. As always, thank you for watching. You can subscribe for more or go to store.gamersnexus.net to help us out directly, but like by buying one of our shirts, mod mats, or toolkits. And you can go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus for the newest behind the scenes video. I'll see you all next time.